and happy holidays. Well, the snow was softly falling on the pasture. And there's a holly wreath hanging on the barn. Jingle bells are jingling, lights are all a twinkling. Christmas time is coming to the farm. Yeah, I'm wishing you a very merry Christmas and hoping that you're warm and home and safe. Surrounded by your herd, singing peace on earth and happy ye holidays. Yeah. Christmas tree is loaded up with presents And the kid in me just loves this time of year There's no dream too big for dreaming Ain't nothing like the feeling When no the ones you love are gathering near So I'm wishing you a very merry Christmas Hoping that you're warm and home and safe Surrounded by your hood Singing peace on earth and happy ye holidays. Hey, happy, happy ye holidays. Wait is over. The sixth Horse Radio Network Holiday Radiothon by State Line Tack is upon us. Grab the eggnog and settle in for six action packed holiday filled hours and get ready to win over $4,000 in prizes. It's an equine network Christmas. It's the best ride of the year. All your hosts are rearing to go and spreading lots of cheer. Have an equine network Christmas. Welcome all from far and near. Say hello to hours of shows. Radiothon is here. Ho, ho, the guests you know are streaming for all to see. So many prizes for you, win one just for me. Have an equine network Christmas, and in case you didn't hear. Oh, by golly, have a happy horsey Christmas this year. I am Lisa with the merchandising team, and welcome to the Horse Radio Network 6 Holiday Radiothon. Happy holidays from all of us at StatelineTac.com. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Hour 1, the Horses in the Morning Hour of the Horse Radio Network 6-Hour Live Holiday Radiothon by Stateline Tech, with additional support provided by Kentucky Performance Products and Benefab. I am Glenda Geek, and emceeing with me for the full six hours is my friend and host of Sleep Stories for Equestrians and the new show-jumping podcast, Ashley Winch. Hi, Ashley. Hey, Glenn. Happy Radiothon. Hey, I'm so excited it's here. We work all month getting ready for this, and it, it is so much fun. And you might 
in hour one, win the sweater, ugly sweater contest for this Radiothon. So you have to, you made this, right? I did. And it's falling apart because I am not a seamstress. <laughs> and uh, all, all right. You have to show everybody your ugly sweater to start. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm thinking it just makes it uglier. And so it's on brand. So here okay, we go. Right, here right, we go. Right. Here we I go. I want to see it. I want to see it. Okay. All right. I'm going to move my mic. Okay. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> It's it fitting that the H is H falling Jordan. apart. <laughs> it's fitting for us that it's all falling apart already. That's terrific. <laughs> we got some Santa chickens and some questionable horses running around. There's glitter everywhere. I'm just going to start. All right. We want to see your ugly sweaters, by the way. You can post them in the comments. We see the comments and everybody else can see your ugly sweaters. You're allowed to post pictures in the comments below. We, we can, as hosts, we can see your comments. Please write your name and then your comment because it sometimes says Facebook user and it's just better that way. It's easier for us. But we have six hours of guests, over $4,000 in prizes to give away, multiple hosts, and you are creative listeners, as you heard Laura Berry at the opener there. Find the schedule, prizes, and guests for all six hours hours on the website at horseradionetwork.com slash radiothon. Our theme for this year's Radiothon is best holiday Christmas fail, just like my sweater, as you can <laughs> see. So I'm already winning. Uh, if you guys want to try and compete, please go ahead and share that fail in the comment section as well. And like Glenn said, please include your name because sometimes they don't come through and we want to be able to give you a shout out. Very good. And of course, it's Horses in the Morning Hour, which means we have to bring in the 14-year host of Horses in the Morning, over 3,000 episodes, my friend, my co-host, Jamie. Hello, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy so holidays. <laughs> <laughs> it was a festive start, and Laura always brings it at the beginning. She did terrific. I gotta say, I hate that picture that you used of the two of us, because that was when I was at my fattest, and you were at your skinniest. You were post-surgery, <laughs> and I was post-baby, and it's bullcrap that that is the picture that you always use. Retakes. That's okay, all right. Well, we'll get a new set done. <laughs> Good to know that. You never told me that before. I just was looking at it. I was like, ew. <laughs> it also does show off our height difference quite a bit in that show. Yeah. yeah. Jamie, tell us what we're giving away this hour at the end of the hour. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be fantastic. So we are giving away $650 in prizes this hour, an equine one natural hoof care products bundle over a $300 value, easy signs online, a $100 gift certificate. And that is the company that makes farm signs, which made my farm sign. Uh, Saddle Seeks Horse Book Bundle by author Susan Friedland, a $162 value and a Ride TV one year subscription. How cool would that be? Uh, so that is what we are giving away and I'm excited to see who wins so we'll be giving away the prizes at the end of every hour so every hour we'll, we, we will ha have prizes and at the end of the day in the last final party hour that we're doing which we'll have a whole bunch of hosts on for uh, we're giving away the grand prizes which is over $1,250 worth of Weatherbeta and Kelly Heard jewelry so definitely stay tuned for all of that we have a fun hour planned for you today we're going to have in the first time in the history of Radiothon, we're going to have a horse on the show. And he's a mighty big horse. He's a big <laughs> personality anyway. He's a little horse with big personality, but he's coming on the show. And we are going to, throughout the day, we're not telling you when, going to be asking you guys trivia questions. And we're going to do the, we want to do the first one right now. You want to start giving away stuff? Uh, okay. That. All right. He's I'm already gonna... going off script. Watch I out. am. <laughs> Here's the bug. This is our design with Miles and, and Nigel and Scooter in the middle there. Skinny I'm going to send Miles them. Skinny Miles and Skinny Scooter. Skinny Scooter. <laughs> so we're going to do questions maybe throughout the day. You'll never know when. The first one to post an answer in the comments that we see. You won't see all the answers. So it's the first one that we see that's correct that's going to count. Uh, and Jennifer's the judge. If you have any complaints, write to Jennifer at horseradionetwork.com. She is the complaint department. And be so, sure to put your name in with the answer so we can tell who you are. That's right. Don't put your name in with the complaints, though, because then I'll email you <laughs> after this. <laughs> all right. This is, an inside, this is an insider's question. What baseball team did Jamie work for? 
What baseball team did Jamie work for? Put your name and the answer uh, with your name. And the first one we see pop in will be the one that wins the mug. All right. So, Jamie, uh, are you ready for the holidays? Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Flossie got it with the Braves. There you go. I was we saw say, Flossie I'm, first. I'm glad I didn't wear my Atlanta Braves Christmas sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I went uglier than that. Oh, my gosh. A lot of people know this answer. <laughs> I'm surprised that many people know. We talked about it recently on the show, though, I think. Uh, well, I mean, because they almost won the World Series. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or they, you know, whatever. I don't want to talk about it. It's still an still open wound. But yeah. Um, so <laughs> uh, Christmas is, I'm getting ready. I've been doing some shopping, you know, Black Friday uh, specials are always fun. And I've uh, employed one of my husband's golf buddies. I'm like, what does he need? So he's sending me, and then I'm like, he's like, all these things. I'm like, pick one and send it to me. Like, just do all of it. I'll just give you my credit card number. So doing that. But there's something different that my family has done this holiday season, which is really irritating to me. So I grew up in a house where my father was uh, Clark Griswold with the Christmas lights. And I we were on the 96 rock tour of lights in Atlanta. Like we were like one of <laughs> he those really was <laughs> people would stop and you'd be like, look, there's somebody stopping on the road. Yeah, I know. Cause like, we're looks like our house is on fire. Actually. <laughs> so I have been very anti Christmas decoration forever, like forever. And now I have, my son is 10 and Chad caved and bought Christmas lights and decorations. And it now looks like somebody threw up Christmas on my front porch. <laughs> and I can't say that I'm a fan, but I had nothing. I was like, I'm not helping. I'm not, I'm going to do, I'm doing nothing. So he hung up all the lights and we have this like strobe thing. And then we have a giant inflatable minion that was <laughs> wearing a Christmas scarf. And I'm like, I ride the horses by the house daily i mean like, do you, you obviously want me to die like take young thoroughbreds by a giant blow up minion what could possibly go wrong so that's what's happening at my house this christmas it's really fun nicholas says is it's not real unless there's photos so you need to make sure you post photos of, see of i will house. i'll take one tonight with all of them on well actually to be fair chad is gone on a trip so um i haven't i haven't Are lit you... anything up since he's been gone. <laughs> Jamie's the Grinch this year. I am always the Grinch. But it's because I'm tortured as a child to watch all this garbage and like you go to flip on the light. Don't flip on the, the living room light. And then you flip it on and the whole house goes black. And you like you busted. Yeah, that was my growing up, which I want no part of. Well, I know a lot of you, including Ashley, are in the mood for the holidays now because you had snow last night. <sighs> Ashley, did you really? I hate snow. The only <laughs> white stuff I want under my feet is sand, people. Please don't say cocaine. I was really, whoa. <laughs> no, that doesn't go under your feet, Jamie. <laughs> I don't know. I just was like, oh, where is she going with this? We don't know each other well enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Happy holidays. <laughs> snow is snow. But uh, at least, you know, Jamie, I am in your book. I do not do Christmas lights, and I don't even have a good reason why. I'm just lazy. So I got one of those plug-in projector things, and I'm like, yeah. eh, there you go, light. That's one of them. That's one of the – That's all I do. My front porch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Merry That's Christmas. Good. Yeah. All right, we're going to hear from our friends at Stateline Tech, and then immediately after that, uh, we had a chance to catch up with our charity of choice. So our charity of choice, we pick one for every Radiothon. I think the last one we did was Horse and Hound, who Jamie trains their horses. I think they were our last charity of choice at the last Radiothon. We did a foster care organization. And, yeah, that's uh, right. That was the kind of the, that's the one I remember. And I think $2,500 is what the tops that we have raised in a day. So let's see if we can beat that today. And this charity is very special to my heart because I've gotten to meet some of the horses and they do terrific work. And you're going to get to meet them right after we hear from our friends at State Line Tech. Saddle up, riders. This holiday season, State Line Tack is turning your barn into a winter wonderland of savings. From cozy blankets to premium bridles, unwrap incredible deals on thousands of products for you, your horse, and your barn. 
Glide through the snow with discounts that will make your heart race faster than a holiday gallop. Visit Stateline Tack today and make this winter a wonderland for you and your trusty equine friend. Use coupon code HRN at StatelineTack.com and receive 30% off your complete order. Simply enter coupon code HRN at checkout. Offers good through December 31st. This year, we have a charity of choice, and that charity of choice is Gentle Carousel Miniature Therapy Horses. And we have one of the most famous miniature horses in the world joining us. This, Jamie, this is the first time in Radiothon we've had a live horse right I here. I love it. I'm so <laughs> in love with magic. Oh, my gosh. So, George, tell us about magic. Who do you have there? Yes, this is Magic, the therapy horse. She's part of Gentle Carousel Miniature Therapy Horses. We have a team of 23 horses, and uh, they all take turns doing different uh, activities. But Magic is the most well-known. She's sort of our little ambassador of Gentle Carousel, and she's here today. Has been uh, uh, providing love and service for uh, 26 years now. This is our 26th year of service. And uh, we're just honored to uh, to be able to reach out to the community and bring these horses to offer love and, and comfort. And you are our charity of choice. So we encourage listeners at home, if you have a chance today to donate, we'll put a link. There'll be a link up there above us, above the video. And we'll put a link here, too. It's Gentle Carousel. Uh, the website is GentleCarouselTherapyHorses.com. But we will put a link so you have that all day long. And... Jamie is leaving uh, very shortly. She's going to New York for a movie premiere, and Magic just got back from one. Tell us about that trip. Yes, she did. She was in her own documentary, Hero Horse, a magical true story, and she was selected to the Manhattan Film Festival, and she actually was an award winner. Uh, It's a 30-minute documentary, and she walked the red carpet in Manhattan, and because she is a sworn-in police officer, she actually had two mounted police officers from New York Police Department uh, escorting her, and they walked on the red carpet. Uh, she arrived in style. She's a police officer? Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. You could get me to give it up. Right? <laughs> when I see her coming. I'm like, what do you want? Yeah. You have it. Yeah, she was sworn in by the Ocala Police Department. And uh, she does outreach programs for the community, for children. And uh, they just love her. And she actually walks into the police department and provides comfort for the police officers. You know, the, uh, the first responders who arrive on scenes, it's, it's a pretty intense job. And so to have some time with magic is a de-stressor. I spent some time with Magic years ago, and I remember, I, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a de-stressor for me, too. Now, Magic has some other accolades, too, and th- th- by the way, the documentary's not out yet. We'll let you know when it comes out, and we'll have you guys back on for that. Thank but uh, Magic was selected as one of history's 10 most courageous animals by Time magazine and is the only living one left that's uh, still alive. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, she provides so much love and, and, uh, and comfort to people across the country. She was uh, asked to come up to Sandy Hook after the tragedy there. Um, when the community came together, uh, it was the first time they saw each other after the tragedy was with magic. And uh, obviously it was, it was just a terrible time, but uh, brought a lot of smiles and a lot of happiness. She was at the Emanuel AME uh, church uh, event after that in Charleston, South Carolina, worked with first responders and survivors of that tragedy. Uh, the, the Pulse nightclub shooting, she worked with survivors and first responders there in Orlando, Florida. Uh, Surfside, the condo collapse there, she worked with survivors and first responders. Oh, wow. So I think, uh, you know, and, and also uh, tornado victims in Moore, Oklahoma, you know, the children that were trapped in the elementary schools. So, uh, a handful of our horses have done those sort of things. Magic is the one who seems to step forward, has provided the most love. Um, so when people hear that and they learn about just the heroic activities she does, she's always willing to step forward and, and offer a, a friendship, companionship. Uh, you know, Time Magazine really took note that she's just a courageous and heroic animal. And uh, like you said, she's the only living animal that's on that list. And so... She is 16 years old. Uh, she'll oh, she has another 20 years yet, George. She's yes, another 20 40. years there. 40. Uh, 
We take good care of her. She has a great life. She only works two days out of the week, so she's got a pretty good gig. Uh, but she really enjoys it. She responds very well. You know, I think when she sees the uh, the flash cameras and, you know, she walks the red carpet and everyone uh, seems to smile, she responds to that. She enjoys it. So uh, I think she gets a, a lot of energy from the crowd interaction and just being with people. She's also very intuitive. She knows when someone's going through a difficult time. I know that you guys do most of what you do. You don't get paid to do it, and you're traveling around the country, and it's, it's expensive to do all of that. Yeah. So we, we encourage you, if you're watching this right now and you want to donate and help Magic and all Magic's little buddies out there, you guys are not too far from us, actually, in Ocala is where you're located. It's Gentle Carousel Miniature Therapy Horses, and the website is GentleCarouselTherapyHorses.com. There's a donate button right at the top, right in the middle, where you can donate right from their website. Uh, and Look at I'm her still... posing while you said donate. That's donate. amazing. Uh, yeah. she, is, she is not met a camera she doesn't like. Yeah. Thank you, George, and uh, we're happy to support you, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. Well, uh, that uh, we, we do hope you help support uh, Gentle Carousel. They're a wonderful organization, and if you can give, give any amount today, we, they would appreciate it, and we re really appreciate it as well. There's something that started our, well, first Radiothon we ever did, and that was we started getting these listeners with tremendous talent that would write songs, sing songs and poems, and we started playing them on Radiothon, and it's become a tradition ever since then. We have the most amazing, talented listeners ever. And every hour, we're going to play you some of those songs and some of the creative things they put together. So let's hear the first voicemail package of the sixth Radiothon. You have reached the Horse Radio Network voicemail line. Please leave your voicemail after the tone. <laughs> These holiday voicemails are brought to you by all of us at Kentucky Performance Products. Happy holidays, horse world. It's time for Radiothon. It's been a couple years for Glenn and Jamie's marathon, bringing all of us good cheer. All the hosts are gathered, the listeners are here for six hours of horsey fun for the holidays this year. Lots of horsey interviews, songs and voicemails too, stories, poems, and trivia for all of us to hear. We thank the wonderful sponsors for supporting HRN. Now let's settle in and listen. The fun is about to begin. Hi there, this is Holly from Elmira, Oregon, and I've got 10 things I've purchased because of HRN, specifically horses in the morning. 1. Horse trailer, 20,000. 2. Paint horse with navicular, 800. 3. Unhandled, newly gelded Arabian, 500. 4. Monty Roberts University, $100 a year for 3 years. 5. 12-year quarter horse, anyone can ride, but no one can load in a trailer. 6. Two saddles, 1,400. 7. Horse property, 425,000. 8. Chinese medicinal Specialist for my old dog who also specializes in acupuncture, $480. Nine, Basset Hound Puppy, born on Halloween and coming soon. Would I change anything? Absolutely not. I love you guys, and my husband commonly hears me say, Jamie said this, or Glenn recommends we use that. He hasn't a clue that we are just internet friends. Merry Christmas, everyone. You know Duke and Miles and Ace and Effie, Maverick and Pharaoh and even Zeus. But do you recall Jamie's most famous horse of all? Joey the thoroughbred had some very rough first years, and when Jamie found him, 
She could even say he's small. All the competing horses used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Joey show them his heart of gold. Then one early February, I came to say, Joey, with your jump so high, won't you let me love you tonight? And so I own Joey as we jump and prance with glee. Joey, the thoroughbred, you'll go down in his story. At the Florida Horse Farm over Two Acres Ranch, the holiday radiothon begins, shaking us from our post-Thanksgiving trance. Gather round, HRN listeners, by the fire's gentle glow for tales of horses and Christmas fails where cocktails freely flow. Listeners and auditors, we have so much to say about our HRN family with whom we share the love of horses each day. Glenn, Jennifer, Jamie, all of the hosts have created a community that we treasure the most. Voicemails have poured in to help spread the cheer. Thanks to sponsor Stateline Tech, it's our favorite way to end the year. Kentucky Performance Products and Benefab 2, we simply couldn't have the Radiothon without you. Horses in the Morning kicks us off with horsey tales to tell. Retired racehorse radio guests share a makeover that went so well. Heels down happy hour, we toast in pure delight. Adulting with horses, surely cracking us up all night. Weather beat as blankets, our prizes so divine, they add excitement to the party like sparkling wine. Everyone hopes for something flashy to win, especially if it's a mug featuring Miles Scooter and Nigel's grin. As the evening winds down, we raise the final glass to our beloved ponies with noses stuck in the dwindling winter grass. So here's to cocktails and horses in the season so bright. Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Podcast play, are you listening? Participate, Glenn's insisting. A beautiful sound and stories abound on HRN's Radio Thon. Gone away is bad weather. HRN brings us all together. We'll hear great songs and guests all day long listening to the Holiday Radio Thon. On the website, we can leave a voicemail about epic fails of our favorite horse. If we're lucky, we win a great prize. Either way, we'll have fun, of course. When Jamie's on video, ain't it thrilling? Though the sweaters are kind of chilling, the hosts will frolic and play the HRN way, hosting Holiday Radio Thon. Later on, they'll conspire to provide guests who inspire so we can face unafraid the plans that we made while listening to Holiday Radiothon. Listening to Holiday Radiothon. Listening to Holiday Radiothon. Happy holidays from Sharon, Ed, Moose, Iggy, Judy, and the rest. Don't let seasonal deficiencies catch your horse off guard. Did you know the amount of essential vitamin E quickly declines in winter pasture grasses? To ensure your horse's natural vitamin E requirements are met this winter, supplement with Elevate Maintenance Powder. To learn more, visit kppusa.com. I'm going to bring Jamie on here quick before we get to our guest. That was Corinne who had all of your horses. I saw your oh. face when you, isn't that amazing? Oh, it about made me tear up. I'm <laughs> so honored that she, you know, Joey was a horse that we struggled with and he was near death and we got him from the sheriff's department and he's now living the dream with a young girl who loves him. And uh, it's awesome. It was a really nice song. And she had a tough time with him when she got him for like a year or two. Yeah, and, he got and she hurt hung in, in there. Place. And now she's eventing with him. So, I love it. yeah, she's terrific. Uh, she actually comes on the cruises with her mom and family. So we'll see them on the next cruise. But I, I, I thought that one would mean a lot to you. It did. Well, we had a chance to catch up with Robin and Warwick Schiller. And they're not easy to get because they've been busy. But, uh, and we got them to relax a little and talk about the holidays. So let's, uh, let's take a listen to that. Of our next guests as accomplished horse people, competitors, champions, trainers, and now podcasters. Today we get to know the holiday side of Warwick and Robin Schiller. Hi guys, thanks for joining us. Happy holidays. 
Well, Happy Merry Christmas to both of you. Now, I think it's well known, and a lot of our we have a lot of listeners that listen to our show and listen to your show, and a lot of them were just at your event, uh, and I guess in California recently. Um, but I bet not a lot of them know what the holidays were like uh, growing up in Australia for you. So, Warwick, start there. What what was it like around the holidays? Was it a big deal or not? Or well, you know, the funny thing is, Australia, the holidays is in the summertime. So you get up in the morning, you open your presents, then you go swim till lunchtime, and then you have some food and it's hot, you know, so then you lay around, you know. Think about the holidays here where you're inside and you might have a fire like we have and the house is warm and you have lunch and you might want to have a little nap. We don't need the fire to, to, to get warm after lunch and want to have a nap on the couch. I'm sorry. <laughs> did you say in Australia you go swimming after Christmas? From what I've heard about Australia and the um, creatures that live there, I don't think I'd swim in anything. Swimming pool. I, I, I grew up <laughs> in the country, so I'm not a, I'm a coastal Australian. You know, uh, 90% of the population lives within 10 miles of the East Coast, and that's not me. So, yeah, not an ocean guy. I'm a country boy, so I'll be swimming in a swimming pool. Okay, good, because alligator, crocodiles, I, all the scary things live in Australia. <laughs> So were you really country? I mean, way out or were you kind of suburban or what? No, I lived in a small country town of about 10,000 people and I grew up on a 1,200 acre farm. So, I mean, we weren't out back by any means, but, um, you know, we were in a small town. Did you, obviously, that you had to take care of the animals on Christmas Day? Was that part of the routine? Um, well, you know, the, all our horses lived out in pastures and, yeah, so they kind of looked after themselves. They can do that when you have 1,200 acres. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, Robin, what about you? You were a California girl, right? Yep. I grew up in California, and our big night was um, was Christmas Eve. That was our tradition that we would, um, as kids, we would go out to dinner on Christmas Eve. We would get pushed into the car, and every time – without fail my dad would have to go to the bathroom and he'd obviously come in and play santa and by the time we got home santa had come and you know we had obviously seen at least one airplane on the way home with the red light so that was brutal <laughs> <laughs> and then on christmas day we would usually go to a you know my grandparents or or aunt and uncle so, so. you you were one of the lucky kids that got to open everything on christmas eve yes Oh wow! We only, yeah, we were only able to open one, and then we all. We had, I had three brothers, so we fought to open the rest, and we never won that battle. Just we admired, this morning, I came out in my Christmas sweater, and my son, who's ten, he was like, "Does this mean I can open a present?" <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> Not quite yet. Not quite yet. You got over a month. <laughs> So do you have, we'll start with you, Robin, do you have a favorite food from the holidays? Is there something that your, your mom made or your grandparents made that it's something that you have every time or you want to have every holiday? Yes, my mom made a great lasagna every Christmas Eve. Oh, wow. Well, every Christmas Eve as we got older and we didn't go out to dinner. So yeah, that was her specialty. Were they Italian? My dad is, yes. Okay, all right, that makes so sense. What part then. of California? Uh, Central California, so about 40, I grew up about 40 miles from Monterey and okay. San Jose, so kind of like not by the coast, but uh, yeah. So okay. now, so I want to go Silicon Valley, yeah. I want to go off script a little bit because here we're hearing stories about Central California and stories about Australia. How did you two meet? <laughs> oh, it's Australia. always a good story. Always a giggle. <laughs> well, well, it's funny. We met at a horse show. We just don't agree on which horse show we actually met at. <laughs> okay, let's hear a work story, and then we'll get the real story. Go ahead. <laughs> I met Robin at a horse show in Ferndale, California, which is way up the top of California on the coast where all the big giant redwoods are. And uh, I met her there. Her story is... No, I want her to tell it. I want her to tell it. <laughs> My story is that I met him the at least a week or two before that. It was Easter, and we were in a little. We were at a quarter horse show in Reedley, which is not a great place. That's real Central California, and um, he had he was holding court 
with a <laughs> pair of uh, Easter bunny ears and a carrot. And he was, um, yeah, he was telling jokes. It was, he doesn't remember, but that's when I met him. Now, Robin, <laughs> what was it? Did he have a pickup line? Was he like, hey, little lady, want to see my Easter eggs? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, <laughs> no. <laughs> I love how you're talking about him like he's not here. They do that a lot around us, don't they, Warwick? Yeah, we get that a lot. Yeah. They do. They do. You know, I, I, you know, I think of meet as in have a face-to-face conversation, whereas I was I, do, I was with a group of people with the carrot, but um, Robin was a face in many faces. But the, the weekend after that in Ferndale was when we actually – spoke to each uh, other apparently you made an impression though apparently so it's been we we uh in february we'll, be, we'll have been married 30 years wow, oh, wow. Congrats. Well, congratulations so so let me ask you work was there a food growing up or you know at the holidays um i think i think mum would chop the head off a chicken and we would have that <laughs> <laughs> You know, the headless chicken was the probably, probably in Australia um, for us. Maybe it was a ham because you know, and a and a cold ham, not a not a hot ham, just because it's you know it's the middle of summer, so mm-hmm. it's, you don't typically have the you know all the hot food like you would here in the US. So there's no green bean casserole with uh, onion rings on top. No, that's not an Australian thing. There's so much stuff that Americans eat like that 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 we don't have in australia so and the and the it's funny is my christmas american christmas uh experience is robin's mum's lasagna so i i think of lasagna at christmas <laughs> oh, american christmas includes lasagna whereas most americans would probably not think that was the case well i have to tell you guys one of the best lasagnas i've ever had was at jamie's house she makes great lasagna one of the best I... i've ever had it's 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 probably the favorite thing that I make, so I think I'm gonna start making it on Christmas Eve. There now. you that's go, a perfect great tradition to start. I love it. <laughs> Christmas lasagna, that's the stuff. I love it. Okay, I have to know because this is a fantasy of every horse girl that's listening to this show. Is did either of you ever get a pony or slash horse for Christmas? I think I did in 2021 or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 2021, she got a horse for Christmas. Uh, I, I love it. I never got a, a horse for Christmas because they were already just out there in the pasture, you know. Yeah, yeah. Were you one of those kids, Warwick, that just grew up riding bareback and running all over the twelve hundred acres like a crazy kid? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember learning to ride. I remember being able to ride, but I don't remember learning to ride. But I probably didn't start riding until I was about seven. Whereas Robin, she her mum had her on the front of the horse before she could walk. So, Robin, did you have the more formal or was it also get on and just bear back? I think, well, I had both. Um, I learned to ride just bear back and falling off and everything. But then I was in 4-H and I had I had a very strict equitation uh, trainer. And she was, yeah, she she was not. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So there was this one lesson. There was a bus in the arena. And my horse. Like there is, right? Like in the middle of the arena, there was a bus? On one end of the arena. And so one time, uh, my horse decided to lay down behind the bus. And I tell you what, she came unglued and screamed and yelled at me, don't let your horse do that. It's winning. You know, just typical. I think she probably whacked him to get him up and just, it was... She was not a nice person. <laughs> so I, I have one trainer that I remember. <clears throat> he didn't speak great English. He was uh, Mexican. And he would. So I still hear his voice in my head going. He would never tell me what to do. He would just go, no, no, <laughs> no. And so I still hear the no. And you probably still hear her voice in your head. of like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody, and especially our age, goes through, had one of those trainers at some point, though. (laughs) You know? We we used to go to Pony Club when I was a kid. I didn't learn to ride at Pony Club. I could ride before we went to Pony Club. But there was was one of those instructors there, you know, one of those leathery-faced old horse ladies that (laughs) are just bitter at the whole world and bitter at you, too. (laughs) That's so true. So... 
Warwick, what was the inspiration? Do you have a podcast? Uh, what's the name of it? It's called The Journey On Podcast. And did I see 100 episodes? Uh, about 130 episodes, and we are around about 2.8 million downloads. Good for you. You know, I, I know you don't follow podcasting that well, but that puts you in about the top one-tenth of one percent of podcasters. Most make it about seven episodes and quit. So uh, congratulations on your success. Obviously, we're happy when any podcaster makes it because we've seen so many over the 14 years we've been doing it that haven't, right? Uh, so congratulations there. Tell us about what, what was the inspiration? Why a podcast? The, the podcast was Robin's idea, and uh, the idea she had was making it like a Dr. Laura <laughs> call-in show where people would call in and say, hey, my horse is doing this, my horse is doing that. How do I solve that? And so when I first started the podcast, I well, I actually said to Robin, I can't really do that because I kind of look at I look at uh, problems with horses these days as not not as a problem. A lot of times, the the person's perception of what's going on is what's creating the problem in the first place. Um, and a lot of times, I can't help them with their so-called problem unless I change their perception about what's going on. And so I said, you know what I'm going to do? The first episode I'm going to have, uh, the first episode was called Changes and it was about how I've changed how I look at things more from a training perspective, more into a relationship perspective. And then the second episode, I thought, well, I'll need to do some more of that. So I did the second episode was called The Science of Connection and it was about polyvagal theory and how it relates to horses and things like that. And then I had a good friend of ours from New Zealand who's an amazing human on the podcast and got her story out of her. I'm like, that's what I want to do. I want to have fascinating people on here to share their stories about how they view the world. If you think about the first two episodes were about how I changed how I view the world and how I view horses uh, with the intention of turning into this Dr. Laura radio show. But then I had that friend of mine on. I'm like, no, that's what I want to do. I want people to share their stories, people who have a perspective on the world that is not the perspective that our society and culture drummed into us. And how did they make the change from the, the you know, the, the perspective we're all programmed with by society? How did they make that change to the way they currently view the world? And that's basically been the podcast since is finding really interesting people and finding out about their stories, their journey, so to speak. Is that the challenge, trying to find people that have stories or does it come easy? Oh, there are so many amazing human beings out there. Uh, yeah, it's, but, I, but I, don't, I don't hunt them down. I don't like actively go searching for them. They, I just, I'm, I'm more of a go with the flow kind of person and they just kind of appear Another podcast guest might recommend them. They come across my radar somehow, but I don't. I don't sweat uh, podcast guests. I just let them basically appear. Well, wait a minute. You mean there's an Australian that's a go with the flow kind of person? Amazing. It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And congratulations on the success. One other question before we go. You just had a, a get together for your pod, for your listeners. Mm -hmm. I, my question is, are you surprised at the power of podcasting? We know it because obviously we've lived it. But are you surprised at how powerful a podcast turned out to be? Uh Kind of surprised about how powerful it turned out, and that's because of the the guests, you know, the people that had come on there and share their stories and you know, a lot of times at, say, horse expos or whatever, people will come up to the booth and they're quite emotional about saying thank you because they say the podcast has changed their life. And it's not, you know, it's not it's probably not something I said on the podcast, but it's something that somebody said on the podcast that led them down a rabbit hole. Or probably the big thing is a lot of the guests will cause people to change the way they view something in their life that's been a truth for them all their life. And suddenly that truth gets shattered. And I think when you can shatter someone's one truth, then they start to question all the other truths in their life and they really go down some rabbit holes. And I have got some guests who are down some rabbit holes. Jamie, I'm going to let you ask that final question that you put in there because I think it's a perfect one to end with. Okay, so before we let you go, first of all, I just want to say that I love watching your videos, Warwick. I'm I'm a huge fan, and uh, I've learned so much from watching just even short clips on uh, on your. I mean, they come across my Facebook. You're everywhere, and I love it. So thank you for being a horse person 
that is doing the right thing. There's so many videos of people that you can see that are doing things where I'm, I cringe um, with my background and, and uh, I just want to thank you for being an inspiration. I, I love watching it. So I appreciate it. Now, that being said, I have to know <laughs> what is y'all's favorite Christmas songs. There is a, an Australian, old Australian Christmas song. So uh, they used to call big male red kangaroos boomers. And so the, the song is called Six White Boomers, and it's basically about these six white kangaroos pulling Santa's sleigh. You would never have heard of it, but, but uh, that would well, be, be my would, I would I'm like looking to that change up. that. No, I would like to change that right now, and if you could give us a few lines, go. <laughs> <laughs> if I could. Yeah, if I could, but I can't. <laughs> six white boomers, snow white boomers. Something, something, something across the Australian sky. Yeah. Perfect. First Yay. podcast ever to get Warren Schiller to sing. <laughs> last. The I last win. <laughs> Robin, do you have one? I'll just go with Silent Night. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, that's always a good one. That's yeah. a perfect Christmas Eve family kind of doing Christmas Eve together kind of song. So yep. I love it. And um, now I've got to go download Six White Boomers. I know. I have to find that. Like we have that to find down. that. Warwick, end with uh, what's the name of your show and where can people find it? Uh, my podcast. It's yep. called the Journey on Podcast and it's available on all the, all the podcast uh, platforms plus on our website. Journey on Podcast. Thank you both. Appreciate you joining us and Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Thanks Christmas. for having us. Well, I, uh, that was fun. It was fun to hear from Warwick. And apparently a lot of people in the audience who are commenting got yelled at by their writing instructors. So I would like to also make note that um, about two, the next day after we did that interview, Warwick went on to his Facebook page and celebrated somebody who was not us. It was like, I just want to let you know, I did a great interview with this person. They asked such good and thought provoking questions. And we had such a good conversation. And I was like, is he slamming us right now? Because <laughs> we did not do any of that. <laughs> I okay. we I just got an email. I have to tell you, and I have to give a a I have to give a daily Winnie out to Sue, who just wrote me an email and sent a couple pictures of her horses. She's listening from Argentina. So oh, wow. hi Sue, and she Hola. sent a couple pictures. Oh, by the way, it looks very warm down there. So, uh, so thanks Sue. She has the right now. She's the furthest away. So if anybody's further than Argentina, uh, make make a note or send me an email, Glenn at horseradionetwork dot com, and we'll give you a shout out as well. Well, uh, Jamie, we have time for a couple before we give away the prizes for the hour. Okay. Would you All like right. to play my little game or do you yes. want to go through the questions that you have? No, we'll play your little game. Okay. So here's what I did. Uh, I did this a couple of years ago and it was a, a popular segment. So I want to, um, I went to the Hallmark Channel. Lucy's website. in France, by the way. Oh, so, that's pretty good. So you have to pretty good too. Nothing. Yeah. Um, so I went to the Hallmark Channel and I took all of their uh, Christmas movies for 2023. I have a title and a description. I haven't read anything of it. I just screenshotted it. So I'm going to give you the title <laughs> and then we're going to try to guess the description of the movie. Okay. Cause think there's always themes associated with, uh, you know, boy meets girl, small town, you know, big, all there's a formula for all these movies. Um, but some of these really buck the trend uh, like this, this first one, I'm just going to give you this. And as an example, okay. and this is called checking it twice, checking it twice. You would think that's about checking a list. No, it's a journeyman hockey player falls for a real estate agent in a career <laughs> crisis when he's traded to her hometown and moves into the cottage by her behind her <laughs> hockey loving family's house. I mean, they really switched it up. I thought it was going to be a checkers champion. <laughs> Hockey check, body check. Yeah, I mean, it could, it could go either way. So Nobody I, I was, worked in a flower shop? No, Nobody? But, hey, real oh. estate in a small town. Uh, he was a yeah. big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair. So and you know her pictures on those billboards, right? On the yeah. benches, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this one is called Where Are You Christmas? Ashley, any guesses? Oh, 
I think this is about someone who gets into a coma after crashing on their way home back to a snow, to their small town. That's good. And they wake up and they're like, "That's really good." Oh, where's Christmas? Yeah. That's really good. And Not their doctor is a hottie, and he's like, "I can show you the Christmas spirit." <laughs> Yeah, not at all close. Uh, Glenn, do you have a guess? Where are well, you Christmas? Where are you Christmas? I am guessing that uh, somebody is down on their luck. They're broke. Uh, they're not going to have a Christmas. They travel to the. She travels to the small town. She's very depressed. She walks into the tree stand with the lumberjack in the lumberjack outfit and meets the lumberjack, and he saves her Christmas and buys her all kinds of presents and a Christmas tree. See, I think either one of those is better than the description <laughs> of the movie I'm going to read you. Because this one is about Addie. She wishes for a year without Christmas. And she wakes up. This is like some serious like stuff. She wakes up and the world is in black and white. So she's got to work together with the town mechanic to restore color to Christmas. What? A mechanic and color? <laughs> <laughs> this is what it I can't uh, make this up. <laughs> okay. Let's see. This one somebody here. just commented on my comment and said that makes him a lumber snack. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. Um, we're gonna go with Mystic Christmas. This is an easy one. Come on, this is an easy one. I I have to say I think I know this one. <laughs> Have you seen Mystic Christmas? Why no, but, are you so dying? No, I, I'm laughing about Lumber Snack. I can't get over <laughs> Lumber Snack. Well, while you get it together, I, I mean, I, this was the gimme. Mystic Christmas. Juniper travels to Mystic, Connecticut during the holidays to work at the Rehabilitation Center and Aquarium. Um, as There's no pizza Christmas. place involved? She reconnects with Sawyer... The owner of the local pizza shop. Uh, Yay! I, it, it had to go back to pizza. Come on. <laughs> it had to. That's funny. All right. We have time for one more, and then we're going to give away some prizes. Yay! Okay. Um, so let's see. We're going to go with, let's see. That's a terrible. Everything Christmas. Everything Christmas. Okay, Ashley, go. Okay. He owns a bagel shop. That has award winning everything bagels, but he he runs out of, of very his specific. organic yeast connection. And this girl <laughs> moves back to the small town and she's an importer exporter of organic yeasts. She's really good at this game, Glenn. Yes, she Do you is. have a guest for everything. Somehow we got week? lumber snack and organic yeast in the same five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's showbiz, baby. <laughs> I have nothing. <laughs> okay. Lori Joe's love for Christmas takes her on a road trip to Yuletide Springs with her roommate, Tori, where Christmas is celebrated year round. And they wanted to participate in the long standing town tradition to honor her late grandmother. Along the way, her friends meet Carl and Jason and the foursome make stops during their journey to ensure more small town to enjoy more small town Christmas attractions. But there's a serious series of events that put a damper on their plans and a little Christmas magic may put this trip back on the right path. So it's about nothing, but everything. <laughs> it's about nothing. <laughs> it's about nothing. It's like the most random description of honoring your grandmother and meeting these boys. It's just garbage. It's garbage. There's another one about an air traffic controller. <laughs> There's, I mean, cause what doesn't scream romance like air traffic control in the holidays? Yeah. Ashley, tell us who the sponsor of our prizes are for each hour. <laughs> this year's prize giveaways are proudly sponsored by Benefab, the leading brand in effective wearable therapies. From pole to pastern, you can find at-home affordable therapy options for your horse at BenefabProducts.com. 
<laughs> Jennifer said AI wrote that. Um, so, <laughs> that's probably true. Navigating Christmas. Recently divorced Melanie and her son Jason visit a remote <laughs> island for Christmas only to find themselves running a real working lighthouse. And then they meet the owner and he's cute. Of course he is. <laughs> Jamie, tell us what the first prize is. Okay, I don't know. Let's see here. Uh, Equine One Natural Hook Care Bundle, $300 value. I hear laughing in the background. What'd you do? Oh, there it is. Okay. Equine One products aid in the fight against bacteria and fungus in the hoof. That's another Christmas special we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, (laughs) While helping bring the feet back into moisture levels, Equine One Natural Hoof Care bundle uh, includes the signature hoof dressing, brush top can, a gallon refill. refill. It's going to last a long time, guys. And the hoof mender putty. You can visit What's the website there, Glenn? Equine.one. That's Equine. the website. Equine.one, that's it. Okay, yeah, that's cool. the website. This stuff is really good. I got to tell you that we use this on Scooter, and his feet have improved since we started using the putty, and we use this on the outside. It is really good. The way the prizes are going to work every hour is I have the list here of everybody who entered or sent in a voicemail or whatever, right? Uh, the auditors and listeners and all that stuff. And it is a list from one... And I'm going to have Ashley pick the first one, 1 to 872. So you're going to pick a number between 1 and 872, and we're going to have a winner of the Equine One Natural Care Bundle worth $300. I'm going to pick 111 since it's the first mm. hour. 111. 111. One, one. <laughs> it's a long <laughs> list. 111 is... Gwen Roberts. Gwen Roberts is the winner of that. So good job, Gwen. Congratulations on winning uh, this bundle. We really appreciate you playing along. The second prize is from my brother, actually. It's Easy Signs Online Gift Certificate for $100. This holiday season, give a gift that will last for many years. And, excuse me, sorry about that. You have a lot of talking to do. You better get it yes. together. Yes. Using our unique step-by-step website, you can choose the options you want and see prices every step of the way. Hundreds of options available from size, shape, color, font, graphics, mounting systems, etc. And currently, free shipping on orders over $150. The $100 gift voucher are good for any new f- sign order on the website that totals $100 or more. Visit Easy Signs. That's e with, E-Z with a Z. SignsOnline.com. Christmas now, Jane- with a kiss. Here we go. Um, a woman <laughs> returns home to help with her family's Christmas carnival and romance ignites. A photojournalist captures a surprise reunion. Carry on. <laughs> go ahead, Ashley. Oh, we uh, got to pick a winner. Yeah. So, our, uh, Jamie, pick a number between 1 and 800. And what did I say? 800. 72. A lot. 72. 872, Glenn. Of course. You're such a <laughs> jerk. She does this to me every time. Sandra Booker. Congratulations to Sandra Booker, who wins a sign, you know, a gift certificate from my brother. So good job. Ashley, what's coming up next? Next is a bundle from my fellow Misty of Chincoteague Lover. This is Saddle Seeks Horse Book Bundle from author Susan Friedland. It is a $162 value. Cozy up with horse books for horse lovers. This prize pack of four nonfiction titles, two of each, one for you and one for a friend, eight books in total, by equestrian author and blogger Susan Friedland includes the hot new release, Marguerite, Misty, and Me, a Marguerite Henry. Henry Fangirl's Search for the Hidden History of the Beloved Author and Her Real-Life Pony, Misty of Chincoteague, Horses Adored and Men Endured, that one sounds good, Uh, Unbridled (laughs) Creativity and Strands of Hope. For more information on any of these books or our friend Susan, head over to saddleseekshorse.shop. Ashley, does this one include Sealed with a List? The one about the holiday season where festive Carly sets out to conquer her list of abandoned resolutions from last year, but she's aided by her coworker. And guess what? She finds love and the confidence to follow her dreams. Is that in there? <laughs> That's in the Not next in package that you're reading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, one between one and, or no, we're back to Ashley, between one and 872. 777. 777. You do like those like numbers. Um, yeah, it's easy to Olivia remember. Olivia Mendenhall. Congratulations, Olivia Mendenhall. You get the book bundle from our friend Susan Friedland. And finally, Jamie, our final prize for the hour. Number one. No, we you have to read it. You have oh. to tell everybody what it is. 
I got to pick? Um, let's see here. We got so many screens going on here. Let's see. The Ride TV one year subscription for $200. You can enjoy your favorite equine videos all in one place with Ride TV, the ultimate equine streaming platform. Whether you're ready to relax with your favorite series, binge watch competition footage, or train with a world champion, subscribe to Ride TV today to see where your ride takes you. Check it out at ridetvgo.tv. Okay, now pick a number. Well, she already picked one, didn't you? No, she did 111, so I'm going to go with one. Mm-hmm. Number one, <laughs> of course you are. Um, I'll, I'll scroll. Amy Funk uh, wins that, wins the Woo! Ride TV one-year subscription worth $200. Congratulations to Amy. Thank you, Jamie, for joining us this hour. We have to go because uh, you- we have our next host waiting. But don't Stay you tuned- want to hear about the not-so-royal Christmas? <laughs> Stay tuned for right. hour two of the HRN Holiday Radiothon as Retired Racehorse Radio is up next. Don't forget the audio version of the Radiothon will be available tomorrow on Horses in the Morning, uh, the Horse Radio Network All Shows, and the Auditor Feeds, so you can get the audio version there. Uh, and you know what? You don't need to miss a minute. You can always go back and take a listen to all of them. And that's it. Jemmy, play us into the next hour. Thanks, Jamie. Bye. Bye. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. Another hour of the Horse Radio Network Holiday Radiothon by State Line Tack. We'll be back shortly. Here comes Glenn the Geek. Here comes Glenn the Geek. Right on to HRN. Scooter and Nightwing, all their friends, pulling on the reins. Bells are ringing, auditors singing, all is merry and bright. So send your entries in the sinning, cause Glenn the Geek comes tonight. Here comes Glenn the Geek, here comes Glenn the Geek, right on to HRN. He's got a box that's filled with prep for all the listeners. Hear those horses whinnying, oh what a beautiful thing. So jump on board and swing your sword, cause Glenn the Geek comes tonight. Let's give thanks to our sponsors, hosts, listeners, and auditors. Merry Christmas! And that was 10-year-old Finley, who's a fan of the show and wrote that himself. Good job, Finley. Finley. 